I wanted to Google image it and get a visual, but I don't remember the name of the show because all I heard was beady beady bong bong. And I'm like, I don't know what words you actually said. <laughs> yeah, beady beady bong bong. <laughs> so, Nina, what is the Forgotten Kids show that you think deserves its own cinematic universe? Uh, thanks for asking, Brian. So I am a child of, <laughs> I'm a child of the 90s. I watched a lot of Rugrats and like early, you know, Nickelodeon programming. There was one show that I really loved when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. it kind of became um, a cinematic universe, or at least movie, but by a different name. And I'm here to to defend its honor. And the show is 1994's Ah Real Monsters, which oh, yeah, that's a good show. And Ah Real Monsters walked to the Monsters Inc. could run. It's the same premise made <laughs> way beforehand. So it's three monsters mm -hmm. who live in the sewers and go to school to learn how to scare kids. And they're- Can I see if I remember their names? You I, you certainly can. And I would, I'm would. i going to send you guys a picture and I want you to tell yeah. me which one is which. Um, and I oh, actually, okay. I remembered which one was which, which just goes to show like, I can't retain any new information, but I still yeah. know this. So that's cool. I no, think I'm, I know I'm, these. Okay. I'm coming all at right. this as somebody that like, I, I didn't have cable growing up. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, so this is all new gonna, to you. Okay, cool. I love that. Tom, why don't you guess, guess first? Why don't are? you guess their names first and then I'll come in and rescue you. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I want to hear what you think their names are, Tom, because this is going to be good. Yeah. 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 Okay. So in the middle, I'm going to say Joe Pesci from Casino. <laughs> uh, then <laughs> to the right, let's say his name is Larry... Gibbleman, and then up top is uh, Splorn. Splorn. You? you know you're not too far off with that last one. No, you're not. Splorn. Surprise! Surprise! Your biggest, say. your um, biggest uh, stumble is that you gave them first and last names, and they only have one name each. This is that's right. I think my go. biggest stumble is that Splorn is going to turn out to be like <laughs> Danish for a really, <laughs> a really bad word. word. Please yeah. continue. Oh, sorry. So the one in the middle is Ickis. The yes. one on the yeah. right is Crum. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the one on top is Oblina. That's correct. Yes. And That's their, beautiful. their teacher was the Gromble, yes. voiced by the legendary Tim Curry. Yes. Or actually, no. Uh, Tim Curry voiced the Gromble's assistant. I'm just looking up his name. Zimbo. No. Yeah. The Gromble was Greg Berger, with whom I am, I am less familiar. He seems to be mostly a voice actor. Okay. We're going to... I don't know. Greg I'm going to look this up right now. I'm getting I'm this. I'm going to look this up right now. From the internet's we're gonna, resource, we're gonna, Wikipedia. <laughs> so it's going to be true. Go <laughs> we're going to pause the feed right here. I'm going to do a pitch for Greg Burgers. <laughs> pa we're going to pause the show. Pause. <laughs> okay, we're unpausing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the internet says. Mm -hmm. All right, well. With I've all the Greg, a oh, growing boy needs Greg Burgers. I've, I've derailed all of it, and I'm sorry because I really thought Tim Curry voiced the Gromble. But uh, Tim Curry was involved in the show, okay. pretty pretty well, heavily, I, actually. This show was great. Yeah. I do remember that they they adopted a dog once named Pustule. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> yeah, about Pustule. Dog, a whole song. It was, it whole and it only ran it. for I think it was like fifty, like fifty two episodes or something. It was really mm -hmm. short. Yeah, fifty two episodes, four seasons, and it's by the same people who did Rugrats, but mm -hmm. it never got the love that Rugrats did, probably because Rugrats was about cute babies and this was about disgusting it's monsters. monsters. But, <laughs> but then, years later, you have the yeah. you have Crumb in the form of what Mike Wazowski, and I'm not saying Pixar stole it, but I'm also not not saying that Pixar stole it. Yeah, There's, there are definitely some similarities. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, these monsters went to school to learn yes. how to scare yeah. yeah, it's basically Monst it's Monsters University. It's Monsters University, it's right. what it is. Yeah. But also Mike Wazowski, like, except that he has one giant eye instead of holding his eyeballs, there's some crumb DNA to be found in there, I would argue. Mm -hmm. Like the short spot Prominent monster. Prominent armpit hair. Yeah. So, yeah, I would love to see this make a comeback with an animated movie and a whole universe because there's got to be more real monsters where these three came from. And I want to see what else is out there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I just don't, say, I don't think it got the love it deserved. Making those three into like photorealistic CGI monsters would, I, I think that that's what the next generation of kids needs. I feel like their world isn't terrifying enough. Yeah, you Let's, know what? That's a great idea. Let's make like a Polar Express style <laughs> uncanny valley <yeah. laughs> computer generated. Tom Hanks. Is all real monsters. Ooh, yeah. I mean, the the, 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 cre the creature designs are, are truly, they are like, if you were to apply that to 
anything outside the realm of animation. It, they would be truly gross. They would be horrifying, but yeah. it's but in and but drawn they're I think funny. That's to their benefit. Yes, like yeah. Crumb is funny. Like he sleeps with his eyeballs in a water glass and he loses them yeah, all the time. Right. Like he's constantly losing his eyes. Yeah, it's it's like and yeah, they're all really funny and their animations all oh. really clever. And it's also like the dude from Pan's Labyrinth, right? Oh my, yeah, with a little the bit. Right. Little he's bit. got the eyes in his hands. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. 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 Basically, yeah, Unreal Monsters nice. is the genesis for so much great art and it it deserves I its mean, if, day. If you think about it, if you think about a real monsters cinematic universe or at least a live action movie and you use mostly practical effects, yeah. how cool would that be? It would be awesome. I would definitely go It'd see be that. Awesome. And it would it would be such a nostalgia thing for kids who because this show, I think it was probably paired. With Rugrats, there's, I mean, it must have been in the same block because, yeah. like, I was sitting there watching it. And so, yeah. you know, everyone who was, like, you know, four, five, six at that time remembers that show. It's It was, yeah. I, it was, I was ahead of its I time. I was in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> so I, well, you know, I watched it anyway because I had nothing else going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I watched a lot of uh, Degrassi the Next Generation in high school instead of having friends. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It all tracks. Anyway, that's it my pick is All Real Monsters. That's a good pick. Thank you. I had two two that I thought of and one I've settled on. The first one that I so wanted to talk about, but I've decided I'll just mention it, was a show called Centurions. Do either of you know Centurions? Mm-mm. I don't know that one. Centurions is a show, all of my pick, both of my picks are from the 80s because um, I am a child of the 80s. And um, Don't call yourself a child. Centurions, <laughs> I'm still a child. Uh, Centurions was basically these three military dudes on a special super team. And they wore like these body suits with holes in them that you could plug different weapons into. They were awesome. Okay, that's toys. pretty cool. Basically, there was there was an air guy, uh, a land guy, and a sea guy. And they got their weapons beamed down to them from a satellite in space and they would fight bad guys. And it was cool. I, that sounds awesome. It was fun. It was really cool. But that's not the one I picked. The one I picked is even more obscure and it's called Bionic 6. Do either of you know Bionic 6? No. All right. It's from 1986. It was, I believe, originally conceived of as an animated sequel spinoff to The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman. Okay. But they huh. they scrapped that connection, but still made it so that... So basically, um, the premise is that there's a, there's a super secret bionic guy named Bionic One, and he goes on adventures. He also happens to be a family man who has a wife and two children and two adopted children. Um, and they're all on a ski trip one day, and there's a horrible accident. Um, they're ex- <laughs> oh my <laughs> they're god! Exposed to yeah, they're exposed to Wait, alien the whole to radiation exposed. to to a- radiation from an alien spaceship. That's and fine. That's different. I thought you meant like a skiing accident. Yeah, me too. I mean, there's an avalanche other, as well. Like there's an avalanche of, okay. as well. Wow, so it's, it's not wow. good for anything. So they're all comatose, and so Bionic One is like, "Hey, Doc." Let's use bionics. And so they all get bionic implants and they all get superpowers. And they're a, a crime fighting adventuring team known as the Bionic Six. There's sure. there's dad who's bionic one. He's like got super strength. And they like just have numbers. Vision. They're all one. They're all bionic one or whatever. So the mom right. is mother one. Uh, <laughs> she has like sci- psychic abilities. They're Love all it. super strong. There's sport one. He's one of the kids. He uses a baseball bat and hits things. Uh, there's a rock they, one. So yeah. they started with the name Bionic One. Yeah. And then they're like, what's the most simple way to keep this theme going? Yeah. Let's keep the number one. Yeah. I, it's better I, than tr- Bionic One through Six. That's if you what think I thought about packaging you, that's a That's what I thought you were going to say. I guess. That, that would make more yeah, logical sense that's where if, I you went with running, would have. if you were running like a team of bionic super soldiers, right. but they're a family and you don't want any one of the kids to be like, oh, he's four, I'm five. You like him better than me. No, you each get your own code names. Well, but right? was one think of them sport and another the like <laughs> dork or loser or something that like made no. it clear that- <laughs> Well, kind of. So one of- <laughs> Well, kind Don of. Don so one does machines. Yeah. So, there's, so there's two biological kids and there's two adopted kids. Yeah. So the two biological kids are sport one and rock one. And she has, rock one has little speakers on her shoulders and she Got blasts it. sonic blasts and she can run really fast. And she loves shopping because it was the eighties. Girls love shopping. Then it gets dicey. Now here's the part where- <laughs> You remember it's the 80s. Uh-oh. Things were, it was a simpler time. Uh-oh. It was a more Cocaine reductive one. time. It's not, it's not so, it's not necessarily offensive, but it is not, not offensive. So uh, they have an oh, Asian boy. foster son who goes uh-huh. by Karate One. That's not the best. 
Um, that's the big, that's the big one where they're like, he's an Asian foster son and he's good at martial arts. It's like, guys, it's more than that. But it, it's, oh, he was a great God character. He's good at martial arts. I, like if he hadn't been, that would have been so much worse. <laughs> His name's karate and then, one and he and sucks at karate. Yeah. <laughs> And then they have, and they and um, and they have a uh, a black uh, adopted son as well, and he goes by IQ. He's super duper smart. He has a, um, a robot named Fluffy, and they all hang out and they all fight crime. They're all super strong, and it's great. Not Fluffy. And what one. I'm gonna do? What yeah, I'm gonna, why is it fluffy. not Fluffy? It's one. an acronym. Right. It's an acronym for something. I don't know. In the uh, in in the chat earlier, you were saying that you were really excited about one of them that you you had liked when you were a kid. Is this the one you were talking about? This is it. I remember watching this as a child. I had one of the action figures for some reason. I was four or five years old and it was just the coolest show. The animation's amazing. The animation does look pretty good. It's just this, it's basically Power Rangers before it's Power Rangers. They all have secret identities and they're a family and they get along and they have a good time and they go on adventures. I love it. And meet up the bad guys. And if if you were to make a live action version of this or revive it today, you could easily spin this off into so many different movies because you're you're in the you're in a a, a near future kind of life uh, style going on here, but it's also got like these '80s trappings. So it's like the future filtered through the '80s. So you can have a lot of fun stylistically with that in terms of your writing and your 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 costumes and everything. Think Stranger Things, but like in the future. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking. Hold on, Brian. Yeah. It just yeah. Did Pixar also yes. rip off your choice? Did they? What about The Incredibles? Uh, no, no. Yeah. For that, Pixar ripped off the Fantastic <laughs> That's Four. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking like superhero family. They all have different powers. Wrong. They fight crime together. You're not wrong. Yeah. It's kind of, it's similar in that way too. Yeah. Because the, the the essential appeal of that show too is that we're going, it's got this retro future mm-hmm. style. Yeah. There's robots, but it feels like it's the 60s. Right. Um, it's just like, it's just a good time. It's a good concept. And I feel like you could do Bionic 6 unstuck in time in that same way, right? Like have really futuristic yeah. stuff and really retro stuff. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing too, where once you open up the idea that like, oh yeah, you could just get Bionics now. Yeah. I go to Albert Einstein high school. We have a flying minivan. They have a flying minivan. Like all of this could make for a really fun movie. And then you open that up to what other concepts can exist in this world. Right. And so- you know, a whole cinematic universe, maybe, maybe not, but at the very least, a pretty good live action franchise that I think has a lot of potential that to me, the Bionic Six is one of those like for like things that are in the back of my mind that every time I remember it exists, I get like really happy. Right. And then just I was just rewatching before our chat. I was like, this not only is pretty good, but it totally holds up. Like it's better than I thought right. that it was. It's still like, you know kind of junky but it's still it's like it's better than you think it is so the so. bionic verse the bionic verse yeah. and the tragedy is that you can't like easily watch it unless you track down awful like crappy uploads right. on youtube so if you can that's find so a way to true. watch bionic six go for it um, <laughs> kids tv pick. from back in the day so yeah that's me awesome pick. bionic six thank totally. you i like it everyone watch it tom <laughs> what forgotten kids show do you think would make a great cinematic universe? Okay, so I, I had two. Uh, they're they're both uh, '90s products. Uh, the first one, I say semi. I, I I don't know how seriously to take this, but Big Bad Beetleborgs. Are we are we all familiar with the Big Bad Beetleborgs? I'm not. I am familiar tangentially. They were a uh, a derivative of the Power Rangers, basically. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I bring up Big Bad Beetleborgs on a lot of first dates, and you'd be surprised how many people. <laughs> leave and pretend <laughs> that they don't know what I'm talking about. It's a, it was a great, so yeah. So the nineties, uh, uh, brought the, the power Rangers and the whole idea of let's take shows from Japan. Let's take the, the fight footage mm-hmm. that, that helpfully has a bunch of people covered. Head to toe, so you shows. can't tell. Yeah. yeah. And then insert that into astonishingly cheaply shot children's television shows Amazing. and just kind of right around it. Uh, what I love about big, bad beetle is that it, everything about it, it's it's this mishmash of like Kirkland signature brand versions of other stuff. <laughs> so you've got like, yeah, I know where you're you've going got the, with this. Yeah, so you've got, you've got the knockoff Power Rangers who are three kids who get superpowers and get they get to turn into beetle based Power Rangers. Oh, basically, yeah, okay. They can only do this because they get sent into a haunted mansion. Sure. <laughs> on a dare, uh, and they accidentally wake up 
a he's called a phasm. His name's Flabber, and he's he's very much he's a cheap knockoff of the genie from Aladdin, but by way of what do Jay kids Leno? love the most? Jay Leno. They love Jay Leno the most. Kids love Leno. That's uh, what kid, I've heard. Kids can't get enough of. <laughs> they love you his classic cars. And then. <laughs> <laughs> Problematic late night contract deals, and yeah, no. So they, yeah, so yeah. they get superpowers from him. the uh, the haunted house is also full of. This is the weird one. It's full of like universal movie monsters who, like, mm-hmm. by their very nature, pretty. They're uh, already royalty generic. free. Yeah. yeah, but for some reason, they decided to to give them all just like slight variations on the name in case. It's like the it's the kind of, of Boris Karloff came after them. Yeah, it's the kind of vampire that you call a Dracula instead oh, of being a vampire. Oh, oh, it's, okay. like, it's like oh, one of that's them. a Dracula. Oh yeah, this his is, name is uh, Count the Fangula. Mummy. The uh, uh-huh. Fang- uh, is his name Fangula. Fangula. There's there's Mums the yeah. Mummy. There's uh, is there a Frankenstein? Franken- Franken- the- Franken- okay, I was like, what's the Frankenstein? Also, well, that's at least a little yeah, clever. What's the Frankenstein's Franken- monster called? Actually, hilarious. Yeah. Yep. Yes, no, it's Frank and Bean's monster. It's and uh, anyway, the show's banana. Uh, uh, there's a uh, there's a, a motorcycle riding grandma that like got absolute shades of like the the trauma movie. Uh, Surf Nazis must die. Like it's 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 just it's all of the cheapest versions of other things piled into this show. I wanted to Google image it and get a visual, but I don't remember the name of the show because all I heard was beady beady bong bong. And I'm like, I don't know what words you actually said. <laughs> yeah, beady beady bong bong. It's the spin-off show that they made for Mel Blanc's character from the old Buck Rogers. It's called beady beady bong bong. Might as well be beady beady bong bong. That's it's what I big, heard. Bad Beetleborgs. Big, okay. Sorry. <laughs> was it big bad Beetleborgs? Was it was big bad prefix? Beetleborgs. Until the second season when it was Beetleborgs Metallics. Uh, uh, at which point the they had toys. to switch oh, over to a different was, show because they oh, ran out of footage. Yeah, right, right. Oh, I just found the, Flabber. The, He's cute. The YouTube there channel Toy Galaxy has a really great video all about Big Bad Beetleborg. So if you haven't seen it, I suggest. And they have a g- great video about Bionic Six as well. So that's a really good channel that if anyone is watching and is interested in the nonsense we're spewing, <laughs> that's a good place to go. I'm so glad that you brought that up because that, that uh, you're right. They do they, they do great work over there. That's the same place where I found out about my my actual pick. Uh, oh, that was it your uh, actual pick? No, no, no. That was just my initial thought. My, my <laughs> actual pick preamble. is. Uh, <laughs> Damn. There was a show. It lasted for one episode. It was in 1992. One. And it was called The Defenders of Dinatron Defenders City. Defenders of Dinatron City. Yes, I had the comic book when I was. You had this the is comic the weirdest book. thing. I was on vacation with my family in Florida. And we were at a grocery store for some reason, I guess getting groceries. I was eight years old and my mom let me get two comic books. One was a Married with Children comic book. I don't know why. And the other one was Defenders of Dinatron City. And I read it and I read it and I read it. And I was like, there's something significant. What is this? Why is this a thing? This feels like there's something large going on here. But there wasn't. There never was. Tom, explain what Defenders of Dinatron City I just looked this up and wow. (laughs) Yeah, it's wow, amazing. Got it. Yeah. Wow. So it was created by this guy named Gary Winnick, who uh, who worked for Lucasfilm Games, was the studio that turned into LucasArts eventually. Uh, he designed this game. Uh, there was a show that was made out of it. It only lasted one episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, it's the it's this uh, very tongue in cheek nuclear society uh, where everything runs on, on on nuclear energy and retro futurism as well. I kind of think Fallout owes a lot to this because there, there's a ton of themes that kind of like that bled into that. Uh, but yeah, this very like post-war like Americana, like everything's great now that everything's glowing kind of a mm-hmm. kind of a approach to this. Uh, there is a uh, there's an evil villain uh, whose name is Dr. Mayhem, who has created a soda pop that's radioactive enough to that's make right. everybody mutate. Wow. When they drink it, and the the plan was to scare everybody out of the city with it, but it turned out that it was delicious. So everyone <laughs> just kind of went with mutating. it. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. so there's just people walking around like there's a kid with two heads, and his mom has nice. an eyeball for a head, and his dad <laughs> grows extra arms. And like the evil villain, who by the way was originally voiced by uh, Christopher Walken, and then the studio replaced him last minute, according to the creators. They wouldn't say why. I'm assuming because putting Christopher Walken into like any children's media turns it into an instant nightmare. Yeah, that would be my guess as well. Mouse Hunt. <laughs> 
Dr. May, he, he winds up taking a group of, Nina, it's going to sound like I'm making this up. Totally does. There's a delivery driver, an electric company employee. Mm -hmm. There's a maintenance worker, a dog, and a toolbox. And he mm -hmm. takes them all hostage. <laughs> uh, Why does he take a toolbox hostage? Unclear. Okay. And they, I think they're, uh, well, I mean, they're carrying a toolbox. Oh. They're carrying I, a toolbox. He wasn't he, like, he puts I'm it into holding the, this tool the cage with them. Right. And like oh. chains up the toolbox. It, it really, it's, it, it's a terrific show. They all wind up getting coated in, uh, in, in the mutation soda and electrocuted and they walk away with crazy superpowers. One of them, Jet Headstrong is his name. He gets the power to shoot his head off of his body like a rocket. <laughs> yep. In what There's instance would that be useful? Buzzsaw for legs. There's, buzzsaw for legs. Yep. It's such a great show. Nina, the it's, toolbox it, it, becomes like a, a hammer, like a, a hammer with a big, a, a human's body. The toolbox, a yeah, becomes a sentient. Yeah, has a has a hammer for a what? head. And, yeah, what does his, the dog do? I got to know what the dog does. I think it's just a super uh, dog. Sort of basic crypto, the super dog mm, stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not a. I, I was a expecting dog. like its tail is a propeller and like. I don't know. I I, I thought it was going to be much weirder. I can see why you would. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, was, it only lasted for one episode, so assume they would have dealt with that in episode. Got it. Two, got it. Had it not been canceled. Was it canceled? <laughs> like makes perfect sense to me. Was it canceled like halfway through the airing? Like <laughs> probably it was. Uh, it turned out like it's ten minutes tell, in the they, networks. They, like they nah. Just, yeah. Fox like was kind of like right on the edge of starting to do stuff like Power Rangers. Like they they were about to take all the cheapest shortcuts that they could. Sure. So like an original. Yeah. animated program probably just wasn't up there alley but yeah. it did have this crazy voice cast Whoopi goldberg played one of the main characters what? uh miss 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 mega what i can't remember her name there was uh tim curry played one of the bad guys in, in, in the tim first curry episode again. he's back again wow uh he's a legend there was a character yeah, named perfect. monkey kid who was played by uh brian stokes mitchell wow aka the teacher from ghost dad so there was a lot of good stuff going on ghost here. Dad. Uh, <laughs> Let's not talk bananas. about Ghost Dad. We don't talk about Ghost Dad. I know we've been house. looking for a name for the show for a while. Uh, can we call it Let's Not Talk About Ghost Dad? Yeah. Perfect. So that's your pick. What would a lot, What would a cinematic universe of Defenders of Dinatron City look like to you? I think there's a ton of stuff you could do with it. I think that if you approached it as like a tongue in cheek MCU situation yeah. where you're giving all of these stupid, stupid characters their own movies and TV shows, like I would love a buzzsaw for legs lady TV show. Like Man. just 10 episodes of trying like a to turn mini that series into of her viable. trying to walk uh, around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine I having buzzsaws legs. for legs is not. Oh. oh. Thank you. And no, I, I, I just think that that's hilarious. It's, it's this, it's this weirdly, there's so much that you could do with this universe. It's so goofy and stupid. And, uh, I, I would, I would love to see somebody approach it just full throttle. What if, here's Talk my final pitch before we go. What if somehow Defenders of Dinatron City and Bionic 6 were combined? Because they kind of have a similar vibe, right? They're mm. both that got that retro futurism thing. They both have weird science going on. They both have, you know, the ability for tongue in cheek wackiness to happen. And they're they, basically yeah. all superhero stories dealing with ridiculous villains. And they've both fallen into the public domain, I'm betting. Yeah, probably. I have one final pitch. The B plot okay. of that Talking. series is that there are monsters living in the sewers learning how to scare Perfect. children. Look I love it. I want it. We could call Let's it. Do it. So the cinematic universe. Yeah, we could call some it. Some of the monsters. Ah, Defenders of Bionic City. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's slick as not. They all Girls have right to get together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At the end, the, the monsters come out of the sewers. And they save like, the day. to help you. Yeah. Yeah. They scare the villain away. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. And one of them is Frank and Beans. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.